Welcome to our first expert talk on the security topic on SAP Business Technology Platform. Uh, today I'm going to tell you about the Identity Provisioning Service, uh, which was uh, mainly asked by, by our German uh, watchers and, and followers. Uh, I've published a book on uh, Business Technology Platform together with Siegfried Seidinger. Uh, it is uh, just in the final stages of uh, being translated to English, so it will be available around Christmas uh, in an English version. Um, and today we are going to focus on the Identity Provisioning Service, uh, where you will learn uh, what the Identity Provisioning Service is, how the architecture is, and how you are what, what is supported on source and target systems when provisioning data between the different systems. Yeah, we're now back on the light board. Our first expert talk on the security topic on the SAP Business Technology Platform. We are talking about the Identity Provisioning Service, IPS, which is part, of course, of the SAP Business Technology Platform, of the BTP. The name itself is already self-explanatory, uh, self-speaking, Identity Provisioning, which means we have identities, users, user identities, that we would like to provision into different software as a service systems. So we have different software as a service systems, like for instance, uh, success vectors, we can have here S4 HANA Cloud, of course, for instance, uh, the uh, SAP Analytics Cloud, the SAC, IPP, integrated business planning, and a lot of other cloud solutions from SAP. But we can also have non-SAP systems here, like for instance, Microsoft Azure Active Directory, or the Google G Suite, for instance. And these systems, uh, they are in our context later on called target systems. So we are talking here about target systems. So this is the target of our provisioning. Every system maintains the users. So we have the users inside success factors, inside uh, S4HANA cloud, inside the analytics cloud, inside IPP, inside Azure Active Directory, and so on. And the roles themselves, they also checked within the success factor system, for instance, which means the authorization check is done inside the system. The authentication can be done in the identity authentication service, in any third party uh, identity provider. But the authorization, uh, the, the, uh, authorization so the, the permission check, is done inside the system. And therefore, we must create the users here and assign the corresponding roles or map it to Azure Active Directory roles. This is also an option. Therefore, we have a service called identity provisioning. This service has connectors to different target systems, to success factors, to S4HANA cloud, to the analytics cloud, to IBP, to Asia Active Directory, also to, of course, identity authentication, the IAS, identity authentication service, that's also an option. And with this, we can provision the users and the, the groups and so on into all the different systems. On the other hand, we need a source of information. So we need a so-called source system. Which can, in our case, be, of course, the identity authentication service, the IAS. It can be uh, Asia Active Directory. It can be success factors. The abbreviation is SFSF. So this could be the, the source systems. And basically what we have here is uh, we usually don't have the same data structures, the same data format in different systems. And therefore, we have a transformation on the source system side and on the target system side. So inside the identity provisioning, we have an own data model being used here. And we have transformations here
and also here on the source and on the target system side. So we have the possibility to make some transformations. This can be either simple field mapping, it can be some more, something more complex like a day transformation and so on. So there you have uh, different options for these transformations. And we also need filters because maybe you don't want to read all the users from the source system. Maybe it should be based on the group assignments in the source system and also for the target system provisioning. So we also have filters here that you can use to reduce the number of entries that are being processed in the identity provisioning service. There is even more source and target systems available. Uh, from a technical point of view, you can combine every system on the source side with the target side, but it's a license topic. So it depends on your license, on your bundle that you've purchased, which combinations you're allowed to use, or which source and which target systems are officially supported by your bundle. If you have the, the biggest bundle, which is the Identity Access Governance bundle, uh, you can use any combination. If you have success vectors bundle, you have a limited number of source and of target systems. So it depends on, on your license, uh, which combinations uh, that are supported. What's also done here, you can load this on a regular basis. So you can have a scheduler here, a timer, that for, for instance loads uh, the, the new, the change data every hour or every 15 minutes from the source system. And then transforms it and provisions it to the, to the target systems. But especially the IAS has a feature. The IAS can also actively send data to the identity provisioning service. And then trigger the distribution to the different uh, uh, target systems behind. Yes, and so we are just in the, in the final phases of uh, publishing our book with SAP Press on SAP Business Technology Platform, uh, auto security and authorizations. Uh, and there you get even more details on the identity provisioning service, but also on the IAS and on how to integrate, for instance, an Asia Active Directory out of the IAS. Yeah, I hope you liked uh, this expert talk. As I mentioned, the first one on the security topic. There are quite more uh, to come in the near future. Uh, yeah, and I hope that you feel comfortable with this topic. Mm -hmm.